Hello, everyone. Heather Holmes here with KTV Fox 2 News in the San Francisco Bay Area. And joining me once again to talk about the ongoing pandemic is Dr. Rashid Chotani. He is medical officer at IEM. And Dr. Always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you for being here. It's always a pleasure to be with you, Heather, to talk about this very, very important subject uh, that the nation is facing. In fact, the world is facing right now. Yeah, and, and we come to you a day after uh, the new president has been inaugurated, and already there are they are outlining some major changes in how this administration is going to respond to the pandemic. What changes do you think Americans will see first? So there are multiple things that are going on, but uh, what has been promised, and I hope that promise is, uh, uh, promise is kept, is the promise of transparency, complete transparency in terms of what's going on, openness and honesty in terms of uh, dealing everything using science and evidence and data to deal with the situation. There are three major components to uh, the, 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 you know, what the new administration is going to be working on, and it's going to be working on developing this uh, distribution of vaccine and increasing the vaccine production. Uh, they want pharmacies to be uh, doing vaccinations. Uh, they want uh, community uh, centers uh, to do mass vaccination, and then, uh, the, uh, of course, the Defense Act, right? So all of these things combined together and, and with the transparency that they're saying that they're going to be working with, and, uh, and, and with Dr. Fauci uh, in the lead, uh, I am hoping that, uh, you know, we will be moving forward. We have a crisis at hand, and, and that crisis uh, is, is something that was co caused by the virus, and the virus is still in control, as you can very well imagine. We've lost over 400 thousand Americans to this virus. Uh, what is critical now is that everybody works together and, uh, uh, you know, tries to deal with this situation in the most effective way uh, that we can, uh, whether it's masking, whether it's social distancing, whether it's strategic lockdowns or whatever it's needed, whether it's distribution of vaccine, whether it's monoclonal antibodies and treatment with it. And then of course, uh, you know, dealing with uh, the, the, the variants, uh, you know, the, the strains uh, or mutant strains that have uh, already emerged uh, uh, around the world. Mm -hmm. Obviously the administration has outlined some rather ambitious goals are they, in fact, realistic, do you believe? Uh, time will tell if they are realistic, and, and there are a tremendous amount of hopes uh, uh, that uh, a lot of Americans have, uh, as you can imagine. I mean, we live in a democracy, and, you know, there was a, uh, you know, very close election, essentially, and uh, President Biden uh, came up front and, and won, and his administration is obviously trying to do, uh, and will try to do their best in terms of dealing with this disease. Uh, but uh, one thing for sure, uh, again, as I've always said, the virus is in control and, uh, and, and we can try and do our best uh, and we should uh, to save lives. Uh, and, and I hope and, uh, that the promises that the new administration has made, uh, they will come through with them. It is going to be a very difficult task for them to be able to do the one, uh, you know, 100 day, uh, 100 million vaccination campaign. Uh, it's not going to be easy. You know, the, the success is going to be based upon uh, the minorities uh, and, and the large majority of minorities, uh, uh, you know, getting the vaccine. If uh, people don't want to get the vaccine, uh, then we cannot vaccinate the people and we will not be able to attain the 70 to 80 percent herd immunity effect that we want to see so we can go back to some kind of normalcy by uh, fall and winter uh, of this, you know, in, in November, December timeframe of this year. So how do we get to that 100 million doses? I mean, it doesn't seem like right now there is a lack of people wanting the vaccine. It's frankly a lack of vaccine. Yeah, I agree with you. And uh, with Operation Warp Speed, you know, all the processes that were placed, uh, the two vaccine companies that are producing the vaccine uh, have had promised that by March, we should be able to get 75 million Americans vaccinated. Uh, there has been a slow rollout. And, you know, in all honesty, you know, I've put small projects together. This is a huge project. Uh, you know, it takes time to ramp up things. Uh, I am hopeful that uh, things will be uh, ramping up and should be ramping up this month uh, so that the vaccine is out there. But I am not really 100% convinced that uh, we will have uh, 100 million people vaccinated or having 200 million doses uh, because you need two doses for each vaccine uh, in the next 100 days. I hope I'm wrong. Uh, and I hope uh, uh, we are able to do that, but it's, 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 a, it's a very steep uh, uh, mountain that we've got to climb right now to get to that level. 
Uh, I hope that uh, another vaccine is approved. If it, if it gets FDA approval, uh, then we might be able to get to that target uh, much easier than what it seems like today. What about these additional strains of COVID-19 and how might that play into uh, you know, this, this goal of getting you know, 100 million people vaccinated? Because there are questions about whether the vaccines will be effective on these new strains. What can you tell us about that? It's a, it's a very important question, and uh, you know there are two different strains that are circulating. One is a UK strain, which is a which is a mutant strain, and the other one is uh, in South Africa. Uh, we know that uh, based upon the limited amount of surveillance that we do on looking at the genetic makeup of the viruses in the U.S., uh, we do have the UK strain, but we have not yet found the South African strain. That really doesn't mean that the South African strain has not made it uh, made it to the U.S. So let's talk a little bit about the UK strain. The UK strain is, uh, you know, we found that it, it, it the transmissibility is much higher, so you can uh, you get more people infected by this virus. Uh, you know, it is a one-to-one -one comparison between the two strains, the current, what we call the wild strain and this new mut UK mutant strain. So this is kind of, they're very similar. But when you have more people infected, that means more people will be hospitalized, that means more people will go to ICU, and that means more people will die. So that is something that we have to consider. Uh, we also understand that this new UK strain, uh, as far as monoclonal antibodies are concerned and the vaccine is concerned, we, we, we don't have that big of a problem in terms of using all of them and losing any kind of effectiveness or efficacy of either the monoclonal antibody or the vaccine. On the other hand, uh, the South African strain uh, is of uh, some concern because uh, what happens is that when you uh, develop antibodies, it goes and attaches itself to a certain part of the, uh, of the virus. And if the virus has mutated at that particular point, then the antibody cannot attach itself over there. Uh, and, and then you lose the efficacy and the effic uh, effectiveness of anything that you're trying to produce. Uh, so we are still watching that very carefully. But one of the things that we have to consider is that, that the vaccine itself, the Moderna vaccine and the Pfizer vaccine, uh, is, 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 is a, the excellent vaccines. They have what we call a cushion effect. So there's a cushion factor that is built into when we develop a vaccine. So when you have a dilution of uh, a vaccine, uh, you, know, you, you say that it, it's got one to 1,000 uh, dilution, and then if you have a different strain that comes into play and it goes to 1 to 100, that doesn't mean that we have lost the efficacy and effectiveness of the virus completely. So it is still very useful. We still have to watch very carefully uh, what the South African strain uh, can, can do. But if that happens, uh, there is a contingency plan, and we talked about it a few weeks ago also, uh, that uh, you know, Moderna uh, as well as Pfizer has said uh, that, in fact, if we have a specific variant where this particular vaccine is not going to be efficacious, it will take us a few weeks to modify and come up with a, uh, with a new vaccine uh, to be efficacious or effective against the new strain or the new variant strain or the new mutant strain. Okay, so many, many, many factors to, to think about. But as we wrap up today, Doctor, your thoughts on a new administration coming in, the potential change in the response, and the overall outlook for the country finally getting a handle on the pandemic. So the new administration coming in at this particular point, uh, the kind of policies that they've put forward, uh, the transparency that they've promised, the openness, and uh, depending upon science and data that they've promised, it looks like a very good plan. It's a very ambitious plan. A lot of money is going to be put into this plan so that a lot of lives and, uh, can be saved in the U.S. Uh, we will have to see uh, in the next few weeks and the next few months how effective that strategy is going to be. Uh, you know, as, as we've all talked about, you know, my uh, whole thing is that we want to come up with a solution to this problem, irrespective of uh, the political spectrum in terms of how things are happening. If we can come up with a solution uh, and, and a better solution for the nation, uh, then I'm all for it. And I hope uh, uh, President Biden and his new administration all uh, good luck and success and, and uh, you know, keeping up with what they've already uh, committed to. And, I, and if they move forward with all that commitment, uh, then I believe that we might be able to uh, uh, come up with some kind of normalcy uh, by, uh, by, by, by November, December, or maybe even earlier. But I would say uh, that by, you know, when fall and winter season start, we should be able to come up 
with some, some kind of normalcy unless and until the virus, as I always say, the virus is in control, uh, takes another format or does something that is just uncontrollable. Yeah, that is indeed what we're all hoping for, a, a sense of normalcy sooner rather than later. Dr. Rashid Chatani, always a pleasure. Thank you again. Thank you so much for having me and look forward, looking forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.